What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another exciting episode of Whatever News! The only news source that provides anything and everything anime and manga related. And we don't bore you, we get into it. Let's do it. No matter how you feel, get it done. No matter Okay, people, welcome back to another episode. As always, in case you don't know, 65% of people right now watching this aren't subscribed, and it definitely would benefit the show immensely if you would hit that subscribe button, hit that bell to get all notifications so we could keep on rocking, growing, thriving, all of that good stuff on these YouTube algorithms. But yeah, I want to jump into these stories ASAP, uh, kind of like, you know, ASAP Rocky and Rihanna having a kid. Yeah down bad let's get into the stories <laughs> okay people so first story on the agenda something a little bit more serious but i did want to start off with this one because i feel like it's somewhat of a psa in general for not only where this took place but also for conventions whenever you go to one in the near future whenever there are some because obviously you know due to the pandemic it's been pretty much you know very few and far between that there are big conventions going on and whatnot but nevertheless at conventions oftentimes there are some creeps there are some people that are no good there are some people with really really messed up intentions and just in general you always should be on point you always got to be on point no matter what i get it and you go to conventions so that you could create memories and have some of the best times of your life and all that jazz and absolutely i've been to plenty of conventions i've been to anime expo like five six different times over there on la so i totally get that but you always got to be on point no matter what no matter where you are no matter what you're doing you got to be on point because creeps like what happened here are everywhere Let's Let's read because it's very messed up what was going down over there at a convention in Japan. Photographer arrested in Japan for allegedly drugging and assaulting six cosplayers. Chiba City police arrested and charged a 49-year-old male on January 21st on suspicion of quasi, can't say that word on here on YouTube, the legal term in Japan for forced attempts on the visuals who are unconscious or unable to resist an attempted quasi of at least six female cosplayers. Authorities stated that the suspect Daisuke Kuroiwa allegedly contacted the cosplayers at cosplay events and offered to photograph them inside his car. Okay, before we continue any further, two red flags immediately because yeah, people can give you opportunities and a lot of us in this space and the nerd culture in general are always looking for opportunities and sometimes it feels like, whoa, somebody cares enough about me that they want to take photographs of me? This is awesome. But red flag number one, or I don't even want to say red flag, but just in general like it comes a little bit off like okay you want to take photographs like i get you know you have that mindset of you want opportunity and all that jazz but you want to take photographs of me like what was the context i guess we don't really have that per se of what he said like why you want the photographs in general but then also inside his car so let me get this straight i'm at a giant anime related convention chances are i'm cosplaying as an anime character or a comic character whatever but we're going to go instead inside of your car to do these photos that, that that doesn't sound right that's a big red flag for me he would supposedly offer them an unopened drink bottle and then slip in an incapacitating drug into the drink when the cosplayers were not looking absolute disgusting piece of shit the suspect confessed at the time of his arrest that he targeted girls who didn't stand out and hung around in the back corners of an event what a sicko the police began their investigation after one of the suspect's victims came forward to the police in spring last year the police stated that the suspect had assaulted at least six girls and women in their teens and 20s including high school age girls between february 11 2020 and july 18th 2021 what a scumbag what a piece of garbage and whatever happens to I know over there in Japan, like you could jaywalk and you might get some jail time. So for what he did, they're going to throw the book at him and rightfully so you just know. Like, I, I mean, it's just common sense of everything he did is some of the most horrible fucking things that you could do, especially like, yo, you targeting people that like he essentially was targeting almost what you would argue is like, yo, the outcast, the people, the outliers, the people that are on the sidelines, the people that aren't in the front of everything, like real sicko behavior. And again, for any cosplayers out there, any in particular ones that maybe, you know, you're a little shy, you like to stay in the corner, or just in general, you going out there and you trying to express your love and passion for whatever it is you're cosplaying and whatnot, be safe, be careful, don't jump at just because, you know, golden opportunities. I've had my own share of like, yo, this sounds so freaking amazing, and a lot of times, if it's too good to be true, at the very least, do some investigation before you get involved in things because you never know what could happen, and my heart goes out to the six females that at the very least have been identified who knows if there's more um 
that were victims of this alleged creep motherfucker. And I just throw alleged in there because at the end of the day, you know, I don't know what really went down and whatnot. And I gotta protect my neck over here on the on the YouTubes. But yeah, that just sounds so disgusting. And stay safe out there, people. Next up on the agenda, we got the rise and slow decline, I would argue, of the one punch man manga now it's very interesting that one punch man despite the fact that on the anime side of things and arguably the mainstream you know big hey i'm in front of everyone side of things when it comes to one punch man hasn't been what it was during the run of like season one and prior to kind of you know season two really giving it the death blow so to speak in terms of mainstream success on the manga side of things every single time there's a one punch man chapter i just hear nothing but praise and adoration for people loving what Mar is doing with the art the story i've heard some pretty interesting things as well but definitely on the art side of things it looks like Murata is i don't want to say single-handedly because that would definitely be discrediting what the author is doing as well one but ultimately what Murata is doing with that art just is carrying so much of just the attention to one punch man in the manga side of things at the very least over here in the west however we got some graphs courtesy of at yellowstone over on twitter shout outs to them that demonstrates exactly what the success of the manga has been and how it had a pretty insane rise and then how it's at this point unfortunately slowly declining and again i gotta attribute any decline to be honest with you to the fact that after season one once season two hit a lot of interest was lost but let's take a look yellowstone said one punch man manga volume sales evolution it was very successful before the anime that is very interesting to note the anime helped boost sales a good amount but the long term without the anime have led to a major decline in sales and you can see like with volume one it did decent because don't forget, One Punch Man originally started as a webcomic from the guy one where he was doing the art himself. Not the greatest art in the world by any stretch of the imagination. And then ultimately, he caught so much attention over there that Jump and Shueisha were like, Yo, that, that kind of looks interesting. And then they got Yusuke Murata, author of I Shield 21, to jump on board to do the arts and kind of revamp it. And that's the One Punch Man we have today. And that's why I already had an installed fan base upon launch. But you can see, again, Volume 1 and 2, uh, I Volume 3, it just starts jumping. Volume 4, it starts jumping. And then all the way up to Volume 9, it just kept on increasing without an anime. And then you get Season 1 starts from Volume 9, and it jumps from, like, let's just say 450,000 copies, per se, to with Volume 10. 10 after the anime starts it's at like 650 almost 700 probably 675 and then you see it little by little went down and then you see season two starts and season two ends and season two did damn near nothing besides stabilize like 19 and 20 volumes 19 and 20 like stood stable at that point but didn't increase and is just up until volume 24 at the very least been continuously declining again you can see like volume 23 went slightly up and i'd argue that it's kind of like what i would say what happens with kingdom in case you don't know kingdom is like a very popular manga that the anime was met with a lot of criticism and people didn't like it because they had 3d cg and whatnot but kingdom still always for years and years and years sells so well and a lot of people attribute it to the only thing that you could really attribute it to is the fact that the manga is so freaking good that fans don't give a shit about none of that and it's a, a master cult fan base on some like hunter hunter even hunter hunter without its 2014 anime used to sell very freaking well regardless so i think that's the same case with one punch man but it's definitely telling and it's also interesting because i remember reading like all of the one manga back at like the end of 2015 or somewhere in 2016 somewhere around there i had read everything and i read the completion of the monster arc so it's interesting to me that we're six years removed from when i read that arc that it's still going on in the serialized version i've heard that there's a lot of differences between the one manga and that but i'm curious has the one manga the webcomic version continued or is one punch man going to end at the end of the monster arc that's something that's definitely interesting to note uh, unless they've already surpassed that but i'm pretty sure i've been told as far as, as recent as like a couple months ago that they were still in the big monster arc with garo and all of that jazz but yeah either way if you're looking at the sales right now it's about at where volume 5 it's a little bit lower than where volume 5 was with volume 24 and what i've noticed with manga is that when it's on a decline like that once it gets to the point where it was where it all began that's where they end the series so one punch man i'm not sure how many chapters are not collected in tonko bonds volumes yet but either way if it keeps on going like this and they don't drop a season three that really boosts things one punch man i'm not sure how much longer it will go but definitely interesting to note the rise and steady decline 
decline of the One Punch Man manga. But in terms of quality, all I hear is praise, praise, praise. And eventually, I got to get to it. I'm just so swamped with so much of my backlog of manga and anime to read. But yeah, One Punch Man interesting stuff okay people next up we have a compiled list according to sandman underscore ap over on twitter regarding events that were not planned well in advance in one piece which you, know, you you sometimes get you know lost in the whole lore and the whole greatness of how well of a story one piece is and how put together it is and all that jazz that you forget sometimes that yo if you think that this guy has had a thousand plus worth of events of chapters in his head when he started chapter one of one piece you're sorely mistaken like nobody is that that's some godly shit you know what i'm saying oftentimes throughout the journey maybe he'll plan in advance like okay i want this to happen years down the road or whatever but it's not like he had the entire story written down somewhere on a fucking napkin you know 20 years ago or whatnot but here we start off with it says vv being princess so that wasn't planned which uh i think it worked well and probably worked better than it would have been like w what role would she have had in alabasta if she wasn't a princess shanks appearing in marine ford war i could see that because it was kind of like some crazy last minute thing and then it was like holy shit he stopped kaido what the hell but ultimately again considering where oda is going with the plot it does kind of sound questionable and also makes sense in terms of what shanks would do but yeah i could see that being like oda was like you know what how do i put a halt to this whole big thing let me bring one of the most epic guys out there and have everybody shit themselves like whoa so yeah i, I could see that ace being roger's son that worked out very well, but ultimately that that's strange. You don't have something like that. Like, you know, the King of the Pirates, Roger, and Ace being his son. I wonder when he thought of that plot point. Like, I'd hope it wasn't, like, right before it or during Marine Ford because, like, that kind of feels like something that should have been a little bit more of a staple. But again, it worked out very well. Like, majority of these things, I'm sure I'm going to say, well, it worked out very well because when is it really like, oh, man, you know, Oda dropped the ball. Uh, Luchi being a villain? Well, CP9, we're all... Maybe he was going to initially have Luchi be a good guy that was just wrapped up in the cp9 shit i don't know drum rock mountain looking like a cherry blossom tree okay that's nothing big do flamingo and corazon having a blood relationship that worked out very well to be honest with you the shichibukai appearing in manga one piece was originally supposed to be a story to fight yonko not shichibukai well i'd probably throw the argument that the shichibukai is similar to plenty other elements it's things that you got to add when you're expanding the story as you're expanding the story you're going to have to add more characters to keep it going keep it kind of fresh and interesting and stuff like that as the plot continues to expand and considering one piece has an ever expanding you know there's subplots upon subplots upon subplots yeah you're going to add the shichibukai in there although yeah that whole idea of like it started off as really just a plot to you know take down the yonko but then he added the shichibukai that's probably now i think about it why he did what he did to the shichibukai a few years back in the manga supernova still surviving a new world oda thought about half of them would have dropped out already no i i mean i get it yeah like hey this is oda's story but i'm just saying like it did work so well as well going into new world that no these were the rookies that were meant to be something great and they turned out that for better or worse because some people slander some of them but they made it a new world and they fought against some very powerful people it actually would have been disappointing if they would have got knocked out the race early on considering like the worst generation is supposed to be here unless you were just going to start focusing all of the spotlight on luffy and zoro like no it worked out great that the supernovas made it and you know have been important law being an important character oda thought kid would become an important character though i ain't gonna lie i've always thought and i'll say this this is strictly off of an aesthetic situation i've always thought that kids character design is one of the coolest character designs in all of one piece so the fact that even as it stands right now in the manga a lot of fans aren't really thrilled with kid's character it's a big shame because kid has just been he looks so freaking cool dog he has just like a whole bunch of hunk of metal especially after the time skip but even pre-time skip like i've always thought he had one of the coolest designs in one piece and it's just a shame that he didn't play a bigger role like easily just character design swap I, I would be fine with it between him and lol not personality just like kid has the coolest character design and i wish he would have been more important editor was against the idea of killing ace and marine for war that was a terrible mistake and i'm glad he didn't go i'm glad oda was like who's writing this shit whose manga is this yeah oda big big the energy dog <laughs> pause oda already had a plan that kuma would break up straw hats later when he was introduced uh so that was initially planned i'm kind of confused or was there something more to it uh but yeah that was one of the legendary moments of one piece and yeah this is fascinating to read i'm not even gonna lie as a hardcore one piece man y'all know i love one piece been talking about it for over a decade now like to find out that some of this stuff was not 
planned and Oda just like winged it and it worked out even better than ever. Oda is a genius and a lucky man at the same time. Like that's one hell of a deadly combination, but Ichiro Oda gets it done and this was really awesome. Shout outs to Sandman underscore AP. Okay, people, next up, quick update for Detective Conan fans. According to this, it says Detective Conan by Gosho Aoyama will be on break for three weeks after next week's chapter, which, which I want to say maybe that chapter already came out. It will resume in weekly Shonen Sunday, issue 14, 2022, out March 2nd, 2022. Oh, so Conan comes back on my birthday. By the way, in case you don't know, my birthday is March 2nd and I share a birthday with Sanji Blackleg. That is so freaking awesome. Okay, Pisces, baby, let's go. If you go, Pisces, drop a like right here, baby. Moving forward, something I did want to remind you guys, because I kind of find it pretty awesome. I actually just recently voted on it. Marshall's second anniversary is having a popularity poll. I told you guys that. It is actually already going, so I'm a little bit late to inform you guys, hey, it's up. So I'll link it in the description below so you guys can get your vote on. But uh, here's an illustration by Hajime Komodo of some of the cast of Marshall. A total of 200 participants in the character popularity poll will be able to get it through lottery so i would love to have that i'm not gonna lie but yeah marshall's first character popularity poll is now available and i voted for my man's dumbledore you know what i'm saying i had to i had to throw some love to him and i'll link it in the description so you could get your vote on if you're a fan of marshall and you want to you know jump in on the popularity poll i ain't gonna lie it's kind of fun i love these online worldwide popularity polls now i'm so glad shonen jump was like well you know they got jump over there too maybe we should consider their opinion at the very least on the popularity poll even though we cancel manga that they love over there because our people don't really care but we could give them a voice with the popularity poll right like why not but yeah people Marshall character popularity poll out now and it ends i want to say february 23rd if i'm not mistaken so you you still got a few weeks to get a vote in if i believe you could vote every day if i'm not mistaken per ip so yeah, get your votes in. Moving forward, I love to see this. I'm not going to lie. And I think a lot of Black Clover fans as well uh, love to hear it. I've heard as of recent, I want to say within the last year, quite a few celebrities. One that sticks out of my mind off the rip that I could immediately say was Meg The Stallion, one of the biggest female hip-hop artists in hip-hop right now. A lot of people just have been, and celebrities at that, coming out and expressing their love and admiration of Black Clover. It's just been really interesting to hear a lot of people come out like all these years later and like yo i love that black clover we covered it here on forever news last year of meg having a big interview on hot ones i believe it was where like they eat the spicy wings if i'm not mistaken and she was like yeah i really love black clover i love asta and now another celebrity an nba player an athlete came out and he expressed his love for black clover too and again i love to see it let's read black clover just got a big nba shout out in this new promo anime has become one of the biggest mediums and entertainment and pro athletes have been spreading its gospel for some time now from football to soccer and even swimming it seems athletes around the world are pulled towards anime and like to talk about it this is why black clover just got its own shout out from the nba and we have one of its stars to thank which by the way yeah just in yesterday's episode alone we talked about uh one of the wrestlers from wrestling in the royal rumble coming out dressed as madara recently dcxnec was able to chat with daniel gafford about his career in the nba and what kind of inspiration helps him on the court it was there the washington wizard center admitted anime has helped them immensely and and Black Clover is the latest show to leave an impression on him. Anime in general, there is a lot of stuff I take from it. There's a lot you can learn about life in general from it, from the villain's standpoint and the main protagonist as well. You know, the main protagonist never giving up, like Goku who wants to fight everyone who's strong. Gifford shared, giving a nod to DBZ before moving to the Clover Kingdom. In a recent one I watched, Black Clover, the main character Ost, doesn't have powers like everyone else. He has anti-magic. He cancels out everything, so he is very useful. If anyone out there is a Black Clover fan, you know what I'm talking about. We know what you're talking about, dog. We know. Continuing, Gifford goes on to say that Asta's mantra about never giving up hits him the right way as an athlete even when a game is going the wrong way the pro athlete leans into Asta's tenacity to boost his own morale Gifford and his team have to show the same perseverance the Black Bulls bring into the battles of their own so if you happen to catch a game with Giffords anytime soon don't be afraid to call out Black Clover lines to keep his head in the game and that is so freaking dope shout outs to dude I would love to have him if you happen to see this I would love to have you here on Forever News a quick you know 10 minute interview if you have the time Let's talk a little bit about Black Clover, baby, and that awesome greatness. But again, just shout outs to all these people that have recently been coming out saying they love Black Clover. I love to see it. I've been <laughs> singing its praises for what now? Wow, how many years has it been? It's been going on seven years. Is it seven years? It might It might be going on seven years since I've been praising the shit out of Black Clover. Wow. I feel old. I'm like reaching the end of a next generation where... 
I reached the end of the previous gen. Like, I was here for Naruto. I ran through that one. Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach, even though One Piece is still going. Then the next gen, My Hero Academia, Black Clover. I'm here, and they're both reaching towards their climax. Well, Black Clover, that's debatable, but My Hero's been confirmed to be ending soon. And yeah, holy shit, I'm still here. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, I did say it's anime and manga for life, right? So there's that and once again shout outs to daniel gafford which this article is at times misspelling his name and had me doing so but shout outs to you my guy um love to see it never give up like asa says okay next up people uh something that i wanted to continue covering for you guys because this is a really awesome look to be able to see what's happening again on our soil over here in the west and the u.s and north america and yeah for other people to see as well like you know if you're in the uk right now if you're in india wherever you're at this is what's happening in the manga market over here and shout outs to at underscore yellowstone for this info this is the top manga sold in the u.s from january 16th through the 22nd uh the new volumes released by viz and Yen Press have had a good first week. Kimetsu no Yaiba had another strong week. And Chainsaw Man Volume 3 has reached over 100,000 copies sold. Let's look at this. Okay, so at number 6, we got V-Stars. In its first week, did 3,785. See, that's more like probably the norm for a semi-popular series. Because V-Stars, you know, it was on Netflix. It was a pretty big deal. But it's not a Shonen Battle series. And usually the ones that sell the most are either Shonen Battle series or something really big like a Attack on Titan or something like that. But V-Stars stars 3785 if this was japan this is the biggest flop in the world but in the u.s this is not that bad and then something that i would have probably expected to be reversed if anything sales wise the way of the house husband volume 7 did 4601 copies this week which i would have expected b stars to be more popular i mean i was more into b stars than i couldn't really get into the way of the house husband i need to give it another try though but yeah that, that's interesting to note then at number four chainsaw man volume four with 4840 copies this week bringing its total to 70,728 and that volume dropped what was it holy shit that volume dropped back in april of last year and it's still selling wait till that anime drops then we got chainsaw man volume 3 that dropped february 2nd a year ago this shit dropped and it's still doing 4,966 copies bringing its total to 103,000 which again if this is Japan, you ideally want to get to the millions. So we're we're probably because what each Chainsaw Man volume had did about like a mil plus or whatever. We're doing like a tenth of what Japan does over here, which that's not too bad considering we've come a long way. Then at number two in its first week, uh, Toilet Bound Hanako Kun with eight thousand three hundred and fourteen. That's actually pretty big. Like I recently went to the bookstore and I saw like a whole section of just Toilet Bound Hanako Kun and art books and all sorts of stuff for it. So don't don't be sleep on stuff. And then. Number one, Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba Stories of Water Flame. And that came out. So this is like what? It's second or third? No, 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 no. This is, I, I want to say maybe like it's third week, if I'm not mistaken. It did 8,948 copies this week, bringing its total now to 48,279. So by next week, next update, we'll have it at 50,000. And I actually recently copped that, which um, I got another channel for Never TF I Want, where I do anime manga pickups videos from time to time. If you're interested, I will be showcasing my latest purchases over there real soon. I already got a pickups video that I did a few weeks back. But yeah, this is the top six selling manga on the u.s charts for the week of january 16th to the 22nd and interesting stuff again it's smaller than what we get with japan and whatnot because again that's the home country and it's even smaller than uh, france as well but we've come a long way i gotta keep on stressing that like b stars doing 3,700. That's not 500 copies. I got to keep on stressing, which was kind of jarring to me back in the day. So manga's come a long way. Okay, next up, people, something that I definitely wanted to report on because I actually just rewatched the first film fairly recently and I seen it in theaters back in the day. Joker 2. We got an update on Joker 2 potentially going down and we got a potential date of it starting filming and all that jazz. Let's just jump into the report. It says Joker 2 starts filming with Joaquin Phoenix in 2023, says report. Joker 2 is reportedly in development with filming for the DC project expected to take place in 2023 according to a new report this will see Joaquin Phoenix return as the clown prince of crime and Todd Phillips step into the directing chair once again a source who claims to have insider knowledge on the Joker sequel via Heroic Hollywood stated that filming will commence once Phoenix's schedule frees up in 2023 additionally it's believed that the first draft of the script has already been received by Warner Brothers no details of the plot or time frame for release were shared Joker opened theatrically in October 
October 2019 before going on to make over a billion dollars at Worldwide Box Office. It was the sixth highest grossing film of 2019. The movie was nominated for Best Picture at the 92nd Academy Awards and Phoenix won Best Actor Award on the night. Since then, speculation has been rife that Warner Brothers has been looking for a way to make a sequel happen with the actor. While this isn't a major outlet reporting on the news, the site does have a somewhat reasonable track record, giving it some credibility. And during an interview with The Playlist in October 2021, Joaquin Phoenix commented on the possibility of a sequel, saying, From when we were shooting, we started to, you know, this is an interesting guy. There are some things we could do with this guy and explore. But as to whether we actually will, I don't know. And considering the fact that like DC movies haven't been flying off the charts like like Marvels have, I wouldn't be surprised if yeah, we get that Joker 2 fairly soon. Like uh, again, if they're going to start filming in 2023, maybe by end of 2023, early 2024, we'll probably get that. Also, they probably want to spread it out from The Batman, but yeah, DC, I'm sure they're they would love another big film considering a lot of their films haven't been doing the greatest and haven't been getting critical acclaim like Joker did. So yeah, I could see that happening and I ain't gonna lie, I'm excited for it. Joker was a wild twisted ride and it was something different and I think that's the direction that DC should go. Like while Marvel does these big, you know, all of these, the Avengers and all that jazz, which is great and it does get dark too. I like these more thriller, short, contained stories and even if it does a second film, as long as it keeps it in that same style, I'm for it because it felt like grounded to reality. It almost didn't feel like a Joker movie until towards the end. But yeah, people, Joker 2 potentially starting filming in 2023 if it's actually a thing. And I'm hoping so because... I wouldn't mind another one if it's similar to the first one. Okay, people, and last story of the episode, Attack on Titan fans. Shit is so big that they're doing murals all over the place of Attack on Titan because of the final season part two. Again, there's so much controversy about Attack on Titan in general. Ever since the end of the manga, there's been, you know, backlash. The latest season of the anime has people going nuts. It's so freaking good thus far. Like, it's been a wild freaking ride as Attack on Titan fans, but there's no denying the massive burning passion of love for Attack on Titan because it says here Attack on Titan murals in New York City and LA celebrate Final Season Part 2. Attack on Titan Final Season Part 2 is going strong and Crunchyroll is celebrating coast to Oh, Crunchyroll is the one involved? I thought it was just some like really dope taggers with huge murals located in New York and Los Angeles. Whether you can see them in person or not, you'll definitely want to check out the finished pieces and a look behind the scenes as to how it all came together. You'll find the New York mural located in Brooklyn, Williamsburg at the intersection of North 10th Street and Wealth Avenue and then I see okay there's one of Aaron Mikasa Armin I've seen this image before but I haven't seen it like on the buildings as a mural Reiner John the Los Angeles mural can be found in West Hollywood at the intersection of Sunset Boulevard and North Martell Avenue and again you got you got Aaron you got Hans like yo this shit is so sick I would love to wake up every morning and just look out my window and see this the murals will be up until February 6th so if you're in either area be sure to stop by for a Titanic photo op and share the results on social media using the hashtag hashtag AOT coast to coast and oh my god I would love to take a picture in front of those and again while yeah Crunchyroll is the one doing it which I thought it was kind of a little bit more organic than that that's really dope man you know 10 years ago there was no company that was going to do this uh, by any means maybe some piraters or some shit but yeah dope stuff and Attack on Titan man we, we're going out in a colossal way hey eh? yeah people those were all the stories we have for today's episode curious what you guys think favorite story best story something I missed out on something you want me to cover in the near future let me know that's all I have for this one though thanks for watching i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day and remember the golden rule anime and manga for life bye have an awesome day peace in you guys just watched another episode of whatever news have an awesome day don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell come on let's go Seven.